Greetings, I'm Barrent, and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. We're continuing our playthrough of Kingdom Death Monster. We're moving into the hunt phase. Normally I put this back to back with our settlement phase, but I really was at a crossroads as to who we should actually hunt. So thanks to everybody with all these wonderful comments I got. There were so many people that were asking for level two white lions or level two antelopes. Some people are saying that level ones are probably our better bet right now. I even had a couple people saying we should take on the Phoenix. So after totaling up everybody's comments and thinking ahead into what our plan is for our settlement's gonna be, we have decided to go ahead and take on another screaming antelope and it's going to be a level one. I know I'm probably going to get some rejection but just like the last time we fought the white lion it was probably the best choice at the time and I think after this screaming antelope we'll be able to move on to tougher things. I'm choosing this mainly because of a few comments that had to do with the fact that there's a lot going on in our settlement phase in the next lantern year. And I'm afraid that if we actually lose all our characters to a level two, it'll be really hard to come back from that. Also, these level twos have so much more movement. I don't have the movement to be able to get to them once they run away with one of my survivors like the white line would do, or trample over us and just run so far away I can't even get back to it. So in that reason is why we're going to be going after this level one screaming antelope. But in the good news is I did get a chance to create Biram Everman. So he is right here. I've gone ahead and made him up. He's got those two guitars that are really, really awesome. So I painted him up. I actually got the base kind of done. There's still some more I want to do, but I got it. He's got the headdress on here. He's got all the screaming antelope gear. I gave him this. I even magnetized these. So as we're playing, if we decide to give him a different weapon or the person that wearing this armor set has a different weapon, we can switch this out for something else. I've made both arms so they can both go on and off as I please. Of course, they also fall off because <laughs> I apparently can't see too well through my camera here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put his arm back on and he's going to go down here on the board. So he's ready to go. Our set of survivors are ready to go. We're going to take our screaming antelope. We're going to set up the hunt board and then we're going to hunt him and we're going to take him out probably all in one video. That's going to be the plan. So we're going to go ahead and put down our random hunt events and then we're also going to take our specific hunt events for our screaming antelope. We're going to put those down as well. So we got a few there. We're going to put him right here. Now I really appreciate everybody's patience. Again, after we take this guy out, I think you're going to see a change in what we're going to be fighting. If you're excited to see if our survivors can take down this screaming antelope one more time, then I need you to meet me at the co-op shop. So the first survivor that's going to go on our hunt board, I think is going to be Caramon. We're just going to go have him pick up this card and see what happens. Grazing field. It says acanthus leaves sprout from the crevices in the stone ground. The survivors spend time gathering and eating the small leaves. Each survivor may heal one hit location of their choice, restoring all injuries and armor points. If any survivors have a sickle, they gain one fresh acanthus strange resource. I do not have one of these sickles yet. That's something I'd really like to get. And we don't have any damage yet. This would have been a better one over here, but that's okay. We're gonna have to roll a random hunt event. So we're gonna go ahead and take our dice and see what happens. Our white die is going to be the tens die. Let's see what we find. We got 90. So we're gonna to go to our book and see what that says. Number 90 says light on the horizon. The survivors hear a screeching howl followed by a crash. They see an explosion of multicolored light on the horizon. The unnatural light illuminates the survivor's way. If at least one survivor is sane, they follow the light. You may re-roll the next result on the hunt event table. Oh, that'll be really good. If all survivors are insane, they turn away from the light walking into the darkness. Move the survivors two spaces back on the hunt road. Regardless of what the survivors do, the light reaches the settlement. Add the lights in the sky settlement event to the timeline next year. 
I think we've actually had this one. We've had something similar because I remember doing this event. So we're gonna write this down on our settlement record sheet. And of course, we do have some sane survivors. So we are gonna be able to reroll the next result on the hunt event table. We don't have all our survivors that are insane. So I've gone ahead and wrote light on horizon. So not only do we have to deal with a random settlement, we got the hooded knight who took out two people last time. I don't even know what this bone witch is gonna do. Now we have light on the horizon. So it's probably a good thing that we're actually doing this level one because look at all this that's gonna be coming. And of course the next settlement event is gonna be our nemesis encounter. So oh, this is gonna be a tough thing to get through these next two years. All right, it's time to continue on. We're gonna remove this, move everybody up. Now there is something else I forgot to do. It's, it was mentioned to me and a few people were able to catch this. I did not mark Tinkerer down here on Gold Moon, so I wanna make sure you know I did that. So we have that ready to go. I forgot to do that and I forgot to mention it as well. So that's good to go. We're gonna continue on with our random hunt event. Now this one's just gonna be a random hunt event and I'm gonna have Baron Everman go ahead and take care of this one. So he's gonna roll two dice and let's see what we get. We got 82. And 82 says, consuming grass, vibrant green grass, grows in patches ahead of the survivors. Closer inspection of the delicate leaves reveals they are sharp as any blade. Each survivor rolls a D10. The lowest scoring survivor, or survivors in case of a tie, become a straggler. Oh no, more stragglers. As the survivors carefully pick their way past the verdant hazard, the straggler stumbles into the bush. Roll a d10. If any survivor has a whip, a hasty tether is made. Add plus 40 roll. I don't have a whip. All right, let's check and see what happens. Because, of course, I can re-roll this if I don't think we're going to have a good time with this. It says you land in the grass patch. As you climb to your feet, you realize it's too late. The parts of your body that touch the ground have sprouted with sharp blades of grass. Any attempt to remove them only spreads them further over your body. During the showdown, you are never a threat. Oh, that's pretty good. Ignore any effect that would make you a threat. Even the white lion sniff. At the end of the showdown, your body blossoms into a whirl of immaculate green grass. Dead? Oh, well, this is going to be terrible. I'm not going to want that. The next one is two through nine. You fall, but manage to interpose something between the grass and your bare skin. Either archive one gear of your choice from your gear grid to protect yourself or treat this result as if you rolled a one. Well, I don't like that. It's 10, you stop before you fall, but it's too late. Okay, no, we're not doing this one. I'm gonna re-roll that hunt event. Okay, that hunt was absolutely terrible. We're gonna re-roll that, I don't like that. So I'm gonna use that one we got from the last hunt event to re-roll this one. We got a 24. And it says, food from the mouths of others. The survivors pass a stone face that appears to be holding something in its mouth. The event revealer investigates. Gain plus one courage and roll a d10. So we're gonna go ahead and roll a d10. We got a two. Oh, I bet that's gonna be terrible. You yell out in pain and pull your hand back, revealing a bloody gash. Did the stone face just bite? Suffer monster level brain event damage and monster level event damage to the arm. Oh no, that's terrible. So I pretty much take two damage. All right, so that means our wonderful survivor is actually gonna take some brain damage. So he's actually checked his little box there. He does gain one courage, but he also loses one to his arms. So he's down to one defense on his arms. All right, with that hunt event out of the way, we're gonna move our characters up and I think we're gonna have Kitty Yara go ahead and take a look at this one right here. It says, skittish, panicked by oncoming survivors, the screaming antelope moves one space away from the survivors on the hunt board. Oh, terrible. Do I have to roll? Oh, I do, I have to roll a random event. Oh no. Okay, we're gonna roll them up. Let's see what we get. White is gonna be our tens die. We got an 85. So let's go see what that says. It says, test of courage. Lava flows from the eyes of a huge grimacing stone face. Its gritted teeth hold a worn sword. If there are any survivors with six plus courage, choose one to be brave the lava. They gain the adventure sword, rare gear. If no one can test their metal, the group moves on with a feeling of inadequacy. If the settlement already had an adventure sword and storytelling, the survivors share stories of bravery. Each survivor gains plus one survival. If the settlement also has sage, the stories are exceptionally moving and each survivor gains plus one courage. Okay, we don't have any of this, but Gold Moon has six courage right here. She has one, two, three, four, five, six. She is able to take the adventure sword. And here is our adventure sword. Oh, looks like something on The Legend of Zelda. All right, it does three speed. It hits on a six plus, but it has no strength. Unique and irreplaceable. Your courage is added to this weapon's strength. Oh my goodness. 
gosh, Nubich is using that dagger, but this would be a six strength weapon. Wow, I'm gonna have to give somebody with a lot of courage a sword skill or something. I might actually just make her use this this turn. Just, she's not gonna, oh, she could hit with the dagger once and then switch to this sword, gaining the weapon proficiency and then being able to use this. That's actually really good. So we're gonna go ahead and give this to Gold Moon. Oh man, this thing's <laughs> this thing's out of control. Oh man, what a great find. All right, our guys are all gonna move up again and then we are going to go ahead and take on our antelope in the showdown. So I'm gonna set up the showdown board. I'm not actually gonna go through all the terrain and everything. I'm just gonna put it on the board and we're gonna start fighting. If you don't like that and you wanna see how all the terrain cards are picked and everything, please leave it in the comments below, but that way it can kind of speed up the showdown phases because we've set up quite a number of them. Of course, if I ever fight a new monster, I'll of course set up the showdown and show you what exactly is taking place. So here's a panned out shot of the showdown. I've gone ahead and set up all our terrain. What we have is we have an ore vein as one of our things. We've seen this before. I've put it right here. We're probably gonna mine that right away. I also got three stone columns. You might not see all of them. One's right here, there's a couple over there. I don't think they're gonna play too much of a p in impact in this. The problem with this one is I can't jump over it like I could with the other one, which was really awesome. Everything else out here we've seen before, our canthus plants, our bug patch. Now there is an interesting thing. Since we have our new screaming gear, one of the things is this screaming bracers. It says down here, on arrival, if possible, add an acanthus plant terrain card to the showdown. When you activate terrain, you may add plus two to your result. That's gonna be awesome. So that's why I put this right in front of him. He's probably gonna go ahead and mine this right away because he's gonna get plus two when he activates that. And we also have our stone noses. Since we're here, on arrival, we gain one survival and an insanity. Gold Moon and Caramon are the two that are carrying stone noses right now. Nobody else has them. So I'm gonna go ahead and give them plus one insanity. They all are at max survival right now, so that's not a big deal. So that's gonna bring Caramon's insanity up to a seven, and Gold Moon's is going to be at a three. Now, Barum Everman and Kittyara both really don't have much insanity, so I might have to work on that. Now the only thing I haven't done is set up the AI deck. So I've gone ahead and taken all our advanced cards here. They're all right here. I'm gonna shuffle these up a little bit and we're gonna draw three. Now, of course, if we were to be going on to level two, which probably might happen in the next hunt, we're gonna be going to five advanced cards, but right now we're only gonna be taking three. So we get one, two, three. Now we also get some basic ones. We're gonna get seven basic and they're all right here. So we're gonna shuffle these up as well. And we're gonna take seven of these basic AI cards. One two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And we're gonna count them. I'm sure we got 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And we're gonna shuffle these all up and we're going to see what our antelope is gonna do to us because he gets to go first in the showdown. So we're gonna draw our top AI card and see what happens. I bet in essence, every, only thing that's probably gonna happen is he's probably gonna go graze. That seems to be his lot in life. All right, we got Bite. Oh, this is a good one, I like Bite. Closest survivor in field of view if no target graze. Now there is no target because he can't reach us. So he is gonna go ahead and graze. I'm gonna discard this and we're gonna go move our antelope. And our graze card states, the monster full moves to the closest acanthus plant and its turn if the monster is on or adjacent to an acanthus plant, archive the train and heal one wound. He is going to move one, two, three, Four to the closest acanthus plant. He's gonna land on it, that's just fine. And he's gonna eat this acanthus plant, nom, 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 nom. And he is not gonna heal because he hasn't taken any wounds. It is now our turn and I have him right where I want him, yes. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is he is going to go ahead and activate this ore vein right here. So let's take a look at the card. Our ore vein says, roll a d10. If carrying a pickaxe, instead roll two d10 and add the results. So we're gonna roll a d10. Now I get to add two because of those bracers. So I got a five. Let's see what five says. Five says, find something shiny. Gain one iron strange resource, archive this terrain. All right, we're gonna go ahead and archive the terrain and we're gonna gain an iron. So we're gonna take our iron and we're just gonna give it to Burham Everman. He's gained a wonderful resource. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna surge with Burm Everman. He is going to surge with his screaming horns. It says right here, scream. Non-deaf, insane survivors gain plus one movement until the end of the round. All other survivors gain plus one insanity. That's gonna be really, really good. So we're gonna go ahead and take down one survival. So Burm Everman is down to five survival, but he's going to gain one insanity from using his wonderful headdress there. I believe he gets that. Let me just take one more look. It says, 
all other survivors gain plus one insanity. Oh, he might not get this. All other survivors. Does this include him? Scream, non-deaf insane survivors gain plus one movement until the end of the round. All other survivors. Yeah, okay, he gets this. I don't see why he wouldn't. So he gets plus one insanity. Kitty Yara is also going to gain an insanity. She's now at two. So we're doing pretty good. we got a couple people with some insanity now. Now these two characters are already insane. They have three or more insanity. So they're going to gain plus one movement, which would be absolutely perfect. Now, of course, our next person is Kitty Yara. She is going to use her cat eye circlet, pretty much the greatest thing in the planet. She's going to look at the top three hit location cards, and let's see what we get. Restless inner thigh. On a wound, your attack disables the monster's powerful running muscles. The screaming antelope gains negative one movement token. Oh, that's good. Oh, a reflex. The screaming antelope frantically attacks everything around it in the zone of death. One at a time, target each survivor in the zone of death and perform a basic action. All right. And the last one is Reflex. Turn the monster to face away from the attacker and full move forward in a straight line. Cancel all hits now out of range. Oh, yuck. Uh, all right. So we're going <laughs> to... These are terrible. All right. I think we're going to put the Reflex first. And then we're going to go ahead and put these... I think we're just going to put it right in this order here. I think that's going to be our best bet. Yep. All right. We're going to put those just like that. And we're going to go ahead and now we're going to have Karamon move. And he has six speed. So he's going to be able to go one, two, three, four, five, six, right up there with his big old butcher's cleaver. And he's going to hit that screaming antelope. So Karamon has his butcher's cleaver, which gives him two speed. And he only needs a five plus to hit this antelope. And he got an eight and a two. So this one missed. But he did hit one of the hit locations. This could be that one that's going to be absolutely out of control. Let's just see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and see if we wound it. We got a nine plus our five or whatever we get for our butcher's cleaver right here. Plus he gets an extra plus one strength. So he got six. He absolutely wounded this thing. Now, of course, this is going to go ahead and one at a time, target each survivor in the zone of death and perform basic action. So if we look at our antelope's basic action, it's going to be speed of two. It's going to be a two plus to hit. So we're going to go ahead and do it. See if he's able to hit Karamon. Now Karamon does have plus one evasion. So he was hit twice. So let's see what locations he was hit on. I'm going to roll these up. He got hit in the head and the body. That's going to be okay. So Karamon has gone ahead and taken one to the head and one to the body. And our Screaming Antelope is going to take one as well from when we got hit by that Butcher's Cleaver. We're going to discard our hit location card and put our basic action back right over here. Now what we have to do is, well, she's going to move one, two, three, four, five to here, I guess. He's going to move up one, two, three, four, five to here. He doesn't really have an action because she doesn't have any type of ranged weapons. She could throw her Founding Stone if she wanted to, but she's not going to. She has six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, she's got seven because she not only gets the plus one for being insane when that thing went off, she also has this, which gives plus one movement as well. Now, she's going to try to hit our Screaming Antelope from right here. Now, we do know our second hit location is actually going to make this thing run in that direction, but I really just want to keep on hitting it. Now, Gold Moon is going to go ahead and use her dagger, which means she gets to roll three d6 to see how she does. Now, she also has plus one luck, plus one accuracy, and plus one strength, so she's got a lot of stuff going on. So we're going to go ahead and roll these up and see how it goes. She got a nine, a five, and a four. To hit our antelope, we needed a seven plus, but of course I do have plus one accuracy, so we needed a six plus. So these two did not hit. Oh, that's so sad. Now we do get to go ahead and try to wound our restless inner thigh. And this is the one where it's going to give a negative one movement token, which will really help if that thing starts running from us. Now I do get plus one strength for our weapon. Then I get plus one strength for being Gold Moon. She actually has it. And she has her Monster Tooth Necklace, which I do have both affinities for. So she gets plus four strength when trying to wound this monster. And she got an eight. Oh, that's so close to getting a critical. Now, since we didn't crit, we at least got to do one wound. So we're going to go ahead and discard our card. We're going to go ahead and take another wound off the stack. Now it's going to go on to, I believe, our antelope's turn. But I think I have a plan first. Now, from where we stand, she has moved and attacked. He has moved and attacked. He has moved. He's also used his action to do the um, orb thing over here. And he's also used a surge action to give everybody some survival, or sorry, insanity, and also movement. Now, she still only has moved up and used her action on the cat eye circlet. I think she's going to surge. She's going to surge. And what she's going to do is, this might not be the greatest plan on the planet, but I really don't want this thing running away from me. 
I am going to throw a founding stone. I know these are really rare, but I'm going to spend my action to sling the stone from anywhere on the board. Archive the card for one automatic hit that inflicts a critical wound. We know the next hit location is, is does have a critical location that I can hit. And also it will remove the reflex that is up here. So turn the monster to face away from the attacker and full move forward in a straight line. Cancel all hits now out of range. That's not going to happen because I'm just going to do the critical wound to gain one Screaming Lantern resource. Also, when I wounded him last time, he's supposed to gain a negative one movement token. So we're going to go put this negative one movement token down in our token area and we're going to gain a Screaming Lantern resource. And we got a uh, shank bone. I was really hoping for one of those pelts. So we're going to archive our founding stone. We're going to remove, discard our hit location, and we're also going to take one wound off the AI deck and put it in our wound stack. This comes to the end of our survivor's turn. There's not much more I can do. I also have to bring her survival down to five. All right, we're going to go see what our antelope does. What is it our best plan to throw that stone? I don't really think so. I don't think we have much trouble beating this guy. I just didn't want him to run from me. I thought that would be absolutely terrible. Now, let's go ahead and see what our antelope does. Now, with this, with my luck, this is going to make him run away. It says back kick in blind spot in range. There isn't. Closest threat in range. And otherwise, no target graze. Oh, this is a basic one. Okay, good. Turn monster so the target is in a blind spot. Speed one, accuracy three, three damage, destroyed hoof. I do not have that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take care of that. So the closest threat in range is going to be these two characters here. I'm gonna have him turn because it does say you have to turn the monster so the target is in a blind spot. And then he's gonna go ahead and kick Caramon. I can choose which one I want. And I'm gonna go ahead and have him kick Caramon with a speed of one, accuracy three, and three damage. Now, Caramon does get plus one evasion against this, so he only needs a four plus to hit Caramon, guaranteeing if he does hit, I'm using a survival to dodge this. He got a five. Oh, no, I'm going to dodge this. <laughs> I don't want to get kicked for three damage. But, you know, let's see where it hits anyway. I'm still going to dodge this attack. I'm right in the head, definitely dodging that attack. And to dodge, Caramon's going to have to use a survival. And on a six plus, he can gain his survival back because he does have his full rawhide gear set. So he's going to roll, and he got a two. He did not get his survival back. So Caramon does go down to five survival. So we're gonna discard his back kick and we're gonna go ahead and move into our survivor's turn. Our first action is she's going to surge to use her cat eye circlet. And let's see what we find. We did not find a trap. All right, we found his pallet. Failure, the giant maw snaps shut. If you are adjacent to the monster, you may spend one survival to react quick or suffer three damage to the arm location. That's no good. Wound, roll a d10 for each survivor currently in the monster's blind spot. And a result of three plus, they are brutally back kicked and suffer three damage to a random hit location and knock back five. Oh, yuck. That's terrible. A reflex, the monster turns to face the attacker. Oh, that'll be perfect. We're going to put them in this order because if I can get somebody up here to hit him, then he'll turn to face me with this reaction. And then once he faces me, there won't be anybody in the blind spot to actually hurt me. So I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put the restless flank first, then we're gonna put the restless shank and then the pallet. Let's go in that order. I think that'll be the best bet. All right, we're gonna put those back and now we're gonna have Burham Everman move one, two to right here and he is gonna attack with those guitars. I'm super excited to attack with these guitars. Now they're paired, which means I get to roll four dice when attacking this monster. They need a six plus. Burham Everman doesn't actually have any accuracy. Oh yes, he does. He has plus one accuracy and he has plus one luck. And he also gets an extra luck because of our blue affinity here from our luck charm. So we're gonna roll four. I need a five plus to hit the screaming antelope. And I only hit him once. Oh no, that's terrible. Oh, that's no good at all. All right, well, the good news is I do hit him once, which means I'm gonna have the restless flank activate, which is gonna be good. That's good enough. That's what we really, really needed. So we're gonna go ahead and roll to see how we do. I need to wound. I get plus four strength to this roll. So I'm gonna hopefully we wound this guy. We got a six plus four. That's a 10. That's enough to wound our screaming antelope. So we're gonna discard our Restless Flank. We're gonna do another damage to our Screaming Antelope and he is gonna to turn to face the attacker. It says right here, the monster turns to face the attacker. All right, that's awesome. Now actually the next thing I'm gonna do is I actually think I'm gonna surge with him. I wanna hit him again with those guitars. 
So Burham Everman is going to go down to four survival, but he's going to roll four dice again because of the two plus two speed he's got with these Katars. And he needs, again, I think a five plus, I think is what we said. So he's going to go ahead and hit with these right here. So he hit three times. Now he doesn't get anything on a nines or anything when he hits, but if he would have got those for when he actually wounds the monster, that'd be a crit. That'd be awesome. So we have three hit locations. We know one of them, or we know two of them actually, is the shank, the pallet, Oh no, there's the trap. I got too greedy. I should have cat eye circled it. Oh well, let's go ahead and see what happens to our brave survivors. Well, it covers those two up. It says here, the screaming antelope panics, its undermouth unleashing an inhuman wail. It bucks wildly and leaps into the air. The attacker is doomed. All survivors adjacent to the monster suffer two brain damage per monster level, knock back five, and are knocked down. The monster lands on its belly and begins to slide on its teeth. Turn the monster directly away from the attacker and full move forward in a straight line. On collision, non-deaf survivors gain one random disorder in addition to the normal collision rules. Okay, so this is gonna be absolutely terrible. Let's go take care of it. So since we're fighting a level one antelope, Karamon has taken two brain damage. He goes down to five. Goldmoon has taken two brain damage. She is going to go down to one. Now the big problem is Burham Everman actually only has one in Sandy, and he's already taken a damage to his brain. So taking two is going to make him roll on the like critical brain trauma thing. Oh, this is going to be bad. All right, we have to roll a D10. I'm not excited to roll on this brain trauma thing. We got a four. Let's see what it says. Four says flee. You are knocked down and suffer knockback equal to your movement toward the closest board edge. Gain D5 insanity. Oh, wow. So Burham Everman is going to have to move five spaces toward the closest board edge. And they're both seven away. So I can pick either one, I guess. I'm going to move him this way. One, two, three, four, five right there. That's awesome. Now, the interesting thing is I'm not exactly sure this works. If I do this wrong, please let me know. It says here, you suffer two brain damage per monster level. Knock back five and are knocked down. Do I still take the knock back five and knock down? Does all this happen before I actually have to run? I'm going to say yes just to give myself... It always says to kind of have the monster be the, the monster kind of gets the advantage. So I'm not sure if all, if I'm supposed to cover all of this and then flee, or if I'm supposed to take the damage flee and then forget the knock back five and knock down. There is a period here. Or is it a comma? It's a comma. So I'm going to guess that all that actually has to take place. All right. So he's gone there. He's out of control, but he does get D5 and Sandy. So I'm just going to take this and divide it by two. We got a one. Wow. We got one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Burham Everman has gain and insanity. That's awesome. I wish you would have gotten more than one. Now, the other two people are also going to have to deal with this. They're taking the damage, but they're going to have knock back five. So they're going to move one, two, three, four, five, and get knocked down. That's awesome. They don't even get to do anything this turn unless I encourage them with her, which is a possibility. He's already attacked and he's surged, so he's pretty much done. There's no reason to get him up, but maybe it might be worth it to get somebody like Karamon back up or something. Or the other thing I can do, I can actually shoot with that bow for once in my life. Now, since we did find the trap, we do have to reshuffle the hit location deck. So I've got it right here. We're just going to shuffle this all together. Go like this, bring it a little bit. Shuffle that hit location deck together, and we're going to put it back. And now hmm, she surged to use her cat eye circle, but she hasn't actually moved and taken an action yet. I think I am going to go ahead and shoot my bow. I've never done it, so let's do it. We're going to shoot a bow. <laughs> cat gut bow. Here we go. All right. The cat gut bow has a range of six. Let's see if we can hit one, two, three, four, five. Oh, no, I forgot. We still have to move this thing. I'm not going to be able to shoot this thing. The rest of the trap says that I have to turn it away from here and move it in a straight line. One, two, three, four, five. Way over there next to a bunch of acanthus plants that I actually put. That's awesome. Sorry, it's off screen. Let's figure this out. So it's way up here at the board edge almost. Now, Kitty R is right here. She's going to move. She doesn't. She has her move in her action, but I can't fire the bow now because it's more than six spaces away. One, two, three, four, five. I think I'm going to have her move up. Actually, I'm going to move her right here. His speed is one, two, three, four. I'm going to move her here. I think that's be best. One, two, three, four, five if it comes to attack her. My goal is to actually have it attack me because I don't want it to eat these acanthus plants and heal itself. All right, now that that's done, our monster is going to go. Oh, now you know why I like to know where that trap is. That was devastating. It did not help us at all. All right, we're going to go ahead and see what happens. It is going to run down, full move in the direction the monster is facing, and turn to face closest survival. What? Full move in the direction the monster is facing, and turn to face closest survival. Okay. 
then pick target knockdown survivor in range 12. Wow, close the survivor in range 12, no target grades. Oh boy, this is gonna be bad. Move twice and attack. If the target is knocked down, this attack gains plus three speed. Oh my gosh, all right. Wow, that's something else. Okay, <laughs> this is even close to what I wanted to have happen. All right, so the first part of the card is full move the direction the monster is facing and turn to face close to survivor. So it's facing this way, so it's gonna full move till it hits the board edge. Then it's gonna to turn to face the closest survivor, which is her. Now we're gonna continue on, pick target. Now, of course, during these, I could choose to use survival, which might not be a bad idea because I could use her to use encourage, which then I could encourage him, which then he could encourage her because these are all triggering between these arrows. It's time for me to be super sneaky. I believe this is right. If it's not, please let me know. It has done its first action. I can choose right here to do a survival action. I have this opportunity right here. Instead, I'm gonna skip all that. We're gonna pick target. Knockdown survivor in range 12. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten is Karamon. Karamon is 10 squares away. So there is a knockdown survivor within range 12. So he's gonna pick Karamon as the target. Now there's a survival action ability right here. This is where I'm gonna use one of my, uh, in, what is it, survival. I am going to encourage Karamon. Karamon is gonna stand up. Now the monster has already picked its target, so it's still gonna go after Karamon, but Karamon is now standing instead of knocked down. Also, Karamon is going to take this opportunity again during this area to go ahead and encourage Goldmoon. Goldmoon is now standing. That's gonna be the way it's gonna go. Well, actually, no, I don't have to. I don't have to encourage her because he, she's gonna stand up after the monster goes and he's already picked him as his target. So she's gonna go ahead and Kitty Yar is moving down to four survival. And now we're gonna move our Screaming Antelope twice. It says move twice and attack target. If the target is knocked down, this attack gains plus three speed. He is no longer knocked down thanks to my little tricky maneuver. So this is gonna move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 and he's gonna go ahead and attack Karamon from right there. So he has a speed of one, two accuracy and one damage. So Rundown is gonna have us roll one die and let's see how he does. He got a four, he did hit Karamon. Where did he hit Karamon? Karamon got hit in the hands. I'm gonna go ahead and take that. It's gonna be just fine. I don't have, I have enough armor there to be able to deal with that. Karamon is gonna go down to one armor in the arms. He's doing just fine. With his AI done, it's gonna be our turn. Now that the monster's gone, I'm gonna stand Gold Moon up. She's ready to go. I'm also gonna stand up Burham Everman, but I think he's pretty much out of the fight for a long time. He is gonna move up one, two, three, four, five. You're not even seeing him. He's totally off the board. He does have an action, and his action again is he is going to use that screaming horns. He's gonna use the screaming horns to give all so insane survivors plus one movement and all other survivors plus one insanity. So he's gonna gain plus one movement, it really doesn't matter. What I'm excited to do is give everybody an insanity. So Kitty Yara, Burham Everman, and Goldmoon are all gonna gain some insanity. So Burham Everman, Goldmoon, and Kitty Yara all got insanity. Burham Everman and Goldmoon are up to two and Kitty Yara's at three. Now we're gonna have her surge, meaning Kitty R is gonna go down to three survival, and she's gonna use that cat eye circlet. I know surging doesn't really get much of a chance to do anything, but I wanna see what these cards are, and I still want to have a chance at shooting the bow if I can. So we found the restless eye. Oh, this is the first strike. The screaming antelope's massive eye glistens with human-like fear. If the attacker's insane, cancel all hits and end their attack. Otherwise, the attacker suffers one brain damage. I think we're gonna put this first. We've got two failures. Oh no, we don't want those. Grasping tiny hands make rude gestures. You're startled. You gain plus one insanity and lose composure. Spend an action to regain your senses before you can attack again. And failure, if the attacking with a melee weapon, it is kicked out of reach by the screaming antelope's thrashing hooves, spend one Lighten or one action to retrieve the lost weapon before it can be used again. If fighting with fist and tooth, suffer the dislocated shoulder severe injury. Okay, we're gonna put him in this order, I believe, is the best plan. And I've got a really good plan. I'm gonna have Gold Moon go ahead and go first. She's gonna go one, two, three, four, and five to the blind spot, and she's gonna attack that screaming antelope. And this time she's gonna use her adventure sword because we've done our damage with the dagger. So we've already gotten the weapon proficiency. We're gonna use this sword. It does three speed, and I get six plus to hit. So let's see how we do. 
So our adventure sword allows us to attack three times and I need a six plus, but I'm in the blind spot, so I need a five. Plus she has plus one accuracy. So I only need a four plus to hit this screaming antelope. And I hope I hit all three times. We only were able to hit twice. Oh man, this three I don't think hits. Six, five, four, I think I needed a four plus. So I was only able to hit twice. We know what these two locations are, they're right here. So we have to do the restless eye first. And Gold Moon has two insanity, so she's actually not going to have to deal with the ability of not being able to attack. But I do suffer one brain damage, so she's going to go down to one insanity. Now I'm going to go ahead and see if I wound these locations. I get my damage, or it's here, it says right here, your courage is added to this weapon's strength. So the strength of this weapon is six, plus she gets plus one for being Gold Moon, so she has seven strength. And on top of that, she also gets her Monster Tooth Necklace, which gives her another two, so that's nine. I can't really miss unless I get a one. So we're gonna go ahead and see how we do wounding this location. We got a seven, we have wounded this location. Now the next one is this one. Let's see how we do against that one. We got a two. Oh, so glad we got all that strength. Otherwise, it would have been a failure and I didn't have to deal with this failure reaction. But we didn't. We got a two plus six is eight plus three. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. We got eleven. <laughs> we wounded him twice. So we're going to go ahead and take care of that. So we're going to put our hit location cards right here. We're going to take two more wounds off the stack. He's down to one, two, three, four. Yes, we're getting through this guy pretty quick. Now, I could use the Cat Eye Circlet again and see what the next three hit location cards is, but I'm going to risk it again just because I want to see if I can actually shoot that bow this time. He's going to go back here with the blind spot, and he's going to go ahead and attack with that Butcher's Cleaver. I'm doing this because if I do find the trap, it's going to move forward, and I'd hate to have him trample right on top of us. So our Butcher's Cleaver is going to give us two attacks. We need a five plus, four plus because we're in the blind spot. And Caramon believe had, no, he doesn't have any accuracy. So we need a four plus. And he got one. Wow, our guys are not doing that great. All right, he got a four plus. He has hit this restless hoof. We already knew that was there. We're going to go ahead and see what happens. Okay, he needs a three. That's plenty. He got an eight plus. He has another plus one strength. So that's nine. That's plenty of strength to hit our Screaming Antelope who has a toughness of eight. All right, we're going to go ahead and do one more wound to this Screaming Antelope. So we're going to go ahead and discard this, put our AI card here, and we're going to move on to our next person. And this time it's going to be Kitty Yara. She's going to turn and she is going to fire with that cat eye bow for once. The cat got bow. She can actually shoot it this time. Range of six. You may aim your attack before rolling. You may reduce the speed of the weapon by one to gain plus two accuracy. We're not going to do that. We're just going to fire. I need a seven plus. All right, come on, Kitty Yara. The first time you've actually shot something. You need to, oh my gosh, she got two hits and one is a perfect hit. No, that's not going to help us because she doesn't have anything for it. And we did not find a trap. Thank goodness. All right, so we've got a failure and a wound location here. All right, let's see what the failure says. It says, if the attacker is adjacent to the monster, the weapon is stuck. Tugging frantically, it comes loose, but you t stumble and suffer knockback five. Okay, that's not a big deal. Roll a d10 for each survivor currently in the monster's blind spot. On a result of three plus, they are brutally kicked back. Oh no, this is gonna be terrible. All right, oh, I hope he doesn't, I really hope she doesn't wound that one. We're gonna go with this one first. Let's see how she does. She got a six, and our cat gut bow gives us an extra plus three strength. So we got a nine. This wounds our monster. Now, of course, I wanna get like a one on this roll right here because I don't want her to get hit or kicked back or anything like that. I got a three plus three is six. That's not enough. Oh my goodness, we got really lucky. So we were only able to wound once, which is just fantastic. So I didn't have to deal with the failure reaction and I missed this one. So I don't have to worry about the wound reaction. So again, we're gonna discard our hit locations. We're gonna mix up the AI cards we have left and we were able to hit him once. So we're gonna put that card right here and we're gonna continue on. And I've got two people poised right in his blind spot. I think it's time to surge with both these guys and see what we can do. I'm gonna use Gold Moon first. So Gold Moon's gonna use her adventuring sword because it's awesome. And she's gonna roll three dice and she's gonna lose one survival because she surged. And this is the first time she's actually used the survival. She's down to five. She's gonna roll three. She needs a six plus. She's in the blind spot. She needs a five plus and she has her extra ability. She needs a four, but wow, she <laughs> missed with two hits, but she hit once with a perfect hit. A perfect hit doesn't do anything. Now, if I was using my dagger, I would have gotten a survival back, but that's not the case. We're going to do one wound location. It is the restless muzzle. It says, if you hit with a club or shield, I gain plus two luck. That's not going to matter. We're going to go ahead and see how we do. We got a six. That's enough to wound this guy. Remember, I get plus six with this thing, plus some extras too. So this is a wound. So we're going to go ahead and discard our card. 
discard a wound, and there's two wounds left, this one and the basic action. Let's see if we can take him down. Karamon's in the blind spot. He's gonna surge and have a four plus to hit. The first thing I'm gonna do is roll to see if I get my survival back. That's a cock die. I got a seven, so I gained my survival back, so I'm not even gonna erase it. We need a four plus to hit this guy. Let's see how we do. Oh man, we all again only hit with one. Oh, this is ridiculous. All right, let's see what we found. We found the pallet. All right, let's see if we're able to wound this. We got a five, plus five is 10, plus he has an extra one for six is 11. That's enough to wound. So we've done another damage to this screaming antelope. And that's gonna bring our screaming antelope just to his basic action. And it's gonna be our screaming antelope's turn because I can't do anything with anybody else. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna do a basic action. It says closest knocked down survivor in range. There is no target, so graze. There isn't anybody knocked down. So he's gonna go graze. He's gonna go one, two, three over here and he's gonna eat this acanthus plant. Nom, nom, nom. And this time he is gonna heal. It says down here at the bottom, archive the train and heal one wound. If there are no acanthus plants, in this, okay, well there is acanthus plant. So he's gonna take the top card from the discard pile on his wound stack and put it back in the AI deck. So now we have to do two damage in order to kill it. And the first person to go is gonna be Kitty Yara. She's gonna use her cat eye circle it. She is gonna use the cat eye circle it to see what the next three cards are. They are not the trap. You strike the magnificent bushy tail, fantastic. That's going first, a wound. Your attack disables the okay, that's awesome. And a reflex. Oh, he's going to turn around and do some zone of death things. Hopefully it doesn't happen. We're going to go in that order. That's going to be my plan. Screaming antelope resource. Okay, yeah, I want the resource. All right, here we go. We're going to put those in those, that order. She is going to use her special white lion coat. The white lion coat, spend my movement and action to move three spaces in a straight line. Then if you move three spaces, activate a melee weapon with plus one strength. Oh, this is going to be ridiculous. One, two, three. She's going to go right here, and she's going to activate her adventure sword with plus one strength. So now it has seven strength, plus her monster necklace, seven, eight, nine strength. Oh, plus, <laughs> plus she has plus one strength. I'm actually, so ten strength. Let's see how we do. So our adventurer sword gets three. It needs to roll a four or better, and we got... No hits! <laughs> I needed a four or better, and I didn't hit with anything. Wow, that's unbelievable. She's going to surge right now. Now, she doesn't get the plus one strength, but that's fine. She's just going to surge and go ahead and attack. And she got one hit. Wow. All right, so she hit once. She hits this. Let's see how she does. She needs to wound it. Well, she's pretty much auto-wounds this thing. Let's see how she does. A three plus six is nine plus two is nine, ten, eleven. She's got a lot. All right, so she wounds the monster. Our monster is going to discard that card. He's also going to discard the AI card. I'm going to have Karamon move over there. I'm not going to show you the movement. I'm just going to go right to his attack. He's going to go ahead and use that Butcher's Cleaver. He's also in the blind spot. He's going to roll two dice. He needs a four or better. He got a perfect hit, which doesn't help him at all. Oh, it does. He's got Mighty Strikes. Mighty Strikes states that when you roll a perfect hit, you get plus two strength. So if that's not enough, this is going to be absolutely ridiculous. He gets two hit location cards. We're going to choose that one first so that if we wound it, we're all done. Let's see how he does. He needs a big number. Oh, he got a nine. I don't think he has any luck. He doesn't. He has no luck. Now, sadly, we went through this entire counter and didn't get any extra resources from our crits, but that's okay. So we're going to put our two things here. We've done our last point of damage. He is dead. That is the end of our Screaming Antelope. So once again, we've taken out a Screaming Antelope. I know it seemed pretty easy, and we have all the strength from our weapons. is just ridiculous. It's easy to get through his toughness. The problem is, if I would have tried to go against a level 2, he would have had this unbelievable speed, and I just don't have the speed to catch up to him right now. He'd have an 8 movement, and every turn he'd be moving away from me, and it would just be really tough to get him. That's why I have to go for him one more time at a level 1. Hopefully next turn we'll be able to get something that'll help us with some speed. Now we killed him, so we get 4 Four basic resources and we also get four white lion or sorry not white lion we get <laughs> screaming antelope resources so let's see what resources we were able to get we got a monster hide another monster hide a monster organ another monster hide wow lots of monster hides we got a pelt that's awesome we got a shank bone we got oh those aren't supposed to be in there <laughs> <laughs> That's the one from the, what is it, the Phoenix. That was the one we got from last time. We got muscly gums. So we only got three. I get one more from our screaming antelope. Sorry about that. And we got a spiral horn. So sadly, we didn't get enough to make all the gear we wanted for ourselves. But that's okay. We got some pretty good things there. I think we can maybe even make our next, was it our next civilization thing? 
our next settlement location. I think it'll be pretty awesome. So here we go. We got monster hide, monster hide, monster organ, monster hide. So three hides and an organ. We got a pelt, shank bone. We got another organ and another bone. So we got a pretty good amount of stuff. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching me take down one more level one antelope. Like I said in the next video, hopefully we can go for some level twos. Of course, we got a lot to do in our settlement video. So before we go to that, I'm actually going to do all our XPs and everything right now. So she, he, has, this is Caramon. He's going to gain a hunt XP, and he's also going to gain one more in his axe, which means he is going to be gaining an axe specialization. Let's see what that does. So he is specialized in axe now. And it says, when attacking with an axe, if you wound attempt fails, you may ignore it and attempt to wound the selected hit location again. Wow, that's pretty good. All right, so Caramon has that. The next person we're gonna do is Goldmoon. Goldmoon is going to go ahead and gain a hunt XP, and she's gonna gain an age milestone. So we're gonna do that as well. And she also gains one towards her dagger proficiency because she did wound once with her dagger before starting with that adventure sword. Burham Everman is going to go ahead and take two hunt XP. He gets two because he's that savior. He also wounded once with a Katar, so he does gain one proficiency in that. Kittyara also is going to gain a hunt XP. And she's finally going to gain one in her bow. Maybe if I shoot twice, I can at least get her to specialize. And maybe at that point, maybe the bow will start getting really good. I don't know yet. I haven't looked at the cards and that, about the bow. All right, so she's done. We do have to do our age event for Gold Moon. So it does say here, we're on our second one. Improved reflexes. The years sharpen your reflexes. Roll on the table below. So I'm going to roll two dice because remember there's two through 20. I didn't do that last few times. All right, we got an eight and we got a, what's this? Four. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We got a 12. It says gain plus one permanent strength. Oh, that'll be really good as well for her. So Gold Moon is up to plus two strength. Wow, she's doing really good. And that's it. We've gone through and got all of our hunt experience. We've also done our weapon proficiencies. We're all set to go into the settlement phase with our wonderful resources. What do you think I should get with these resources? I only got one pelt, so I can't quite finish off his set, but we're getting really close. I'd like to hear what you think in the comments below. That's it. Thank you so much for watching this playthrough. I hope you enjoyed the hunt and also the showdown against the antelope. I appreciate your patience. I know fighting a level one antelope probably wasn't the most exciting thing, but I just don't think we would be able to deal with his way he can move around the board and us not be able to get to him. If you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the bell symbol so you know when our settlement video comes out. Also, please feel free to leave anything in the comments below. I'd love to hear from everyone. Thank you so much for watching. And if you're excited to see what happens in the settlement, we've got a lot to do. We've got like three events. Then I need you to meet me at the co-op shop.